Good morning, lads. How are we doing? Um, I wanted to do something a little bit different here. Uh, I had a few people ask some questions about how this machine works here, uh, which is my seven segment three digit display. Um, so I decide to try and give you all an explanation as to how this works. So I guess we'll start at the beginning. So there's a button here, which will then push this piston here and it will send a quick pulse into this block here. The observers will read the quick pulse and I'll take it to that block there. There's a row of redstone there. And basically what's going to happen there is it's going to quick pulse the bottom piston. And one tick after that, it's going to quick pulse this top piston here. So what it's actually going to look like is something like this. So this is actually managing the rotation of the um, of the piston feed tapes. They're called feed tapes because basically as you cycle them around, there's just a big circle. Um, and you can actually store data in that circle, which is what I'm doing here. So basically one, two, three, four, I think five. Roughly. So you about you need like five blocks per side. So so it's gonna push up. Okay, and then across, I think it is. So when it gets pushed in, I think that needs to be a block up from memory. I think that's it there. Okay, yep. Yeah. So this is the actual feed tape arrangement here. So there's a block there and then there's going to be one here. So basically what's going to happen is this piston here and this piston here, they're both, both going to push simultaneously. So it's going to end up in a position like that. And then one red centic after those pistons push, this top piston here is going to push it and it's going to end up back like that. So it's going to self reset. Um, I might just wire that up, sort of, just to show you how that all works. Um, I actually had another piston here at the bottom that was just there to bud power the thing on the side. Um, so, yeah, that works. And then I'm just going to, like, for demonstrative purposes, I'm just going to have a sticky piston here, just so I can easily time this all in sync. Um, and for the top row, what did I have? Okay, so I had redstone here, so it was meant to push down, how do I actually manage that? Ooh, okay, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then I actually had a rail, so I was powering the rail to get that um, zero redstone delay uh, sort of thing, just where you can transmit a, a signal with less redstone delay. And then I just had it just like that. So this is the setup I was using for the feed tapes. So if we go and which other one did I need to power? I need to power that top one there. This won't um, take place for today's video. I'm still going to do today's video. Um, this was just for anyone that was curious as to how one of these things actually works. But anyway. So you can see when I press that, it does cycle that little circuit there. So, yeah, there we go. So I put a, I'm going to put a piece of orange concrete in and you can see it slowly start to cycle around. Yeah. So you can see this, this mechanism will slowly cycle that piece of orange concrete around. Now the cool thing about this mechanism and what I'm actually doing in here, you will notice there are glass blocks. And the glass blocks aren't spread out evenly and they aren't really spread out in a pattern. But basically what I'm doing is I'm using the glass blocks as a sort of binary um, signal. So when there's a glass block, that's zero. And the reason why I say it's zero is because I'm using a redstone torch here. So you'll see along there, there's a row of redstone torches. Now basically what's gonna happen is it's only going to be powered at certain points. Another neat thing you will notice just very, very quickly about this feed tape here is it has 10 blocks. So if we count, um, actually I don't want that there, I want that there. Yep, okay. So if we count the blocks around, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which also happens to be the amount of numbers that we want to cycle through. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So when we fire this, you will see, as it changes around, there will be certain spots where that redstone lamp is no longer... I just broke it. Oops. 
what to do. Jesus. Um, is that okay? I think that's okay. I need a block there, I think. It's gonna push. It'll push up, then across. And then that'll push down, then across. But... Oh, stop it. That's annoying. Oh, okay, that's why. That should be okay now. It was just that, that piston there was trying to power a transparent block, so it was just pushing it straight through. Anyway, um, so there needs to be a block there because that one goes first, and there needs to be a block there because that one goes first. We fire that again, and I broke it again. What the fuck? As you can probably tell, I didn't really have this. Oh, well, I actually didn't have this issue with the other clock there. So far. Why is that? Oh, it's double pulsing the redstone. Okay, funny, 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 funny. Very funny. Okay, so let's try that again. Oh. Okay, that looks better. So that one needs to push down first, and that one needs to push up second. There we go, fixed it. So now you can see that um, that little feed tape there is pushing around in that circle. And you can see when there's a cobblestone block there, the redstone lamp is on. But when there's a glass block there, the redstone lamp is off. So that's, that's sort of how I'm powering the top blocks. And I have eight of these little circuits here. So the first seven, and the reason why this is called the seven segment display, is because it has seven individual segments on top. So what I've done is, using these feed tapes here, I have seven individual feed tapes that each manage their own little segment. So when I want a certain part on or off, depending on the number that I want to display, I just have a glass block there um, to turn certain pistons on and off. Um, the reason why I used honey blocks here as well is just so the sticky pistons, or the slime blocks and the honey blocks don't interact and they don't create like a bit of a mess. Um, but yeah, so I've got seven separate feed tapes, each managing their own little segment. And then I have this final feed tape at the very, very end here. Now this feed tape doesn't manage its own little segment. What this feed tape actually does is it manages the next segment along. So when this reaches 10, what's gonna happen is there will be a cobblestone block there. Now when that cobblestone block goes there, um, it will actually power this piston here, which pushes, pushes that observer forwards and it will then power this next feed tape. So I'll turn that on and just fire that. So you can see at the moment it is currently changing. Fire, fire. And you'll see that when it gets to that point there, after 10 rotations, I think it's the next one, it actually fires the next one and then it'll reset back to normal. So that's how it's managing the tens column there. And it's the exact same thing. The pattern's basically repeated for the hundreds one as well. Um, I don't actually need this feed tape here because I don't actually have a thousands column. Um, but theoretically, uh, because this is like a little tileable system here, you can make this go off into infinity basically. Um, and it'll keep counting into infinity. I'm not sure why that data there is displayed wrong. One, two, that should just be one. This might not have updated yet, to be honest. Yeah, okay. It's just, just a bit buggy. I need to world add this earlier because I was messing around with it. Uh, but yeah, it's cur currently on 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and on 20. That feed tape at the back kicks around, and then it'll go and display 20. So yeah, you can see that piston's extended there. Um, but yeah, this is this is sort of how it works. Um, it's pretty simple, really. It's just using the feed tapes to store data, uh, just like that. And yeah, as, as it cycles around, it will extend and retract certain pistons, depending on the number you want to explain, uh, display. Uh, so I did need a hard, I guess, hard code this whole thing, because when I did first build it, it was initially all... Um, cobblestone like that and I just picked a random point said it was zero 
and depending on the digit that I wanted to display, what I actually did is I sort of got into the middle of it just here and I replaced certain blocks like that depending on the digit that I want to display. So yeah, that's that's sort of how this how this little feed tape works. Um, pretty quick summary. Um, and yeah, that's that's sort of it for this video. Um, I will have the cannoning video as well uh, today. I probably won't upload this one in Discords and I'll just sort of leave this up on the channel. Um, so it's not directly related to cannoning or anything. It's just a cool, cool little thing, and people want to know how it works. Uh, so there you go. Um, so I'll see you in a little bit when I do record the next video. So have a good day, and I'll see you then.